Hey guys, you're watching Beat TV, and I'm here with Elliot, Sam, Zach, and Scott of the Rubens. Hey guys. How you doing? Hey. Okay. That's good. I'm glad you're all well. Um, now, you've just launched a massive national tour to correspond with the launch of your debut self titled album on September 14th. You guys must be pretty excited right about now. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. think so. It's been a long time coming. Um, it's a bit of a relief now because we. We recorded the album quite a long time ago, and we knew that about the tour. Obviously, when you're planning a tour, you know about it a long time, a long time before you actually release it. So you just want to hurry up and just get it out there and, and get people to listen to the music and come and see the shows. Like it's, it's, it's a bit of a relief that you know tickets are going on sale and stuff like that. Well, you did jump from shows at the Northcote Social Club and the Corner just last month to doing a forum show for this new one. Yeah. How you guys? Only a few select Australian bands can really fill out a space like that, so it must be People pretty exciting for you. Yeah, we yeah. didn't realise that. People were like, whoa, you signed up for the North Socials. We're like, okay, is that a good thing? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't seem it's big, but it's not massive. But, but um, Well, it's not an arena show. But no, it's not, and we can't expect them to do that just yet, so mm. can't get ahead of ourselves. We've just been hearing their third single called My Gun out on radio this week. Now, it's only your third single, and yet you guys have just exploded, like, nationally. It's been crazy. Um, it was actually the song that introduced to the producer of this album, David Kahn. Yeah. Not yeah. Lay It Down, which is a song we first heard, most of most fans, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, for those who don't know, he's a pretty big deal US producer, and you went to New York to record it. Mm -hmm. um, you did do that a little while ago, and you've kind of since been building up your, you know, live reputation from there. So, have you been working on some new stuff and some new recordings since then, being back home? Yeah. Um, before new recordings, no. No. No, not, no. not since not since we've been back um, from New York. But yeah, before obviously before we went to New York and that, we um, spent a lot of time working on those new songs in the new album and um, basically working on our live show, played out well, played them tight because um, I think before we went to New York, we were quite, you know, we were okay, but we were pretty scrappy. So mm -hmm. um, we've come a long way since we. You know, spent like a month in um, some recording studios in in New York. So yeah. So what are you gonna bring um, to to the live show to really fill it up? Like any visuals and amazing stage antics well, for you? I think because of the, the the fact we're playing forum kind of shows now, we kind of owe it to the audience to do and to spend a little bit of our money on production. You know what I mean? And take it to that sort of next level of a rock and roll show, which is mm -hmm. what we really want to do, like old school kind of rock and roll. Um, I don't know, we're going to spend quite a bit of money on lighting and and, and a few different things and just make the stage look great, I think. Um, mm. You know, the set's got to be really tight and good and we've got to make it interesting and flow really well dynamically. Um, we've also got uh, basically our, our younger brother, Jet. Um, we actually named the band after him. It was his nickname, Ruben, at the time. Um, he was taught drums by Scotty, um, was too young to be in the band, so we're deciding to bring him on um, for a few of these shows, just to play oh, percussion nice. for about four songs, sort of bring him, bring him on halfway and mm -hmm. he can smash away on some floor toms and stuff. He's a really good drummer, so that'll sort of add another aspect to the show as well. Um, but yeah, I guess because it's our first album, we can't be expected to play, you know, two hours. Yeah, you know, of we've only got we, we've got the album that we've written, maybe you know some covers and stuff like that. So we've just got to try and make our album as interesting as possible for the audience. <laughs> Well, um, on reports that I've heard of previous shows that you did at Northcote Social Club mm -hmm. in the corner, the first about five rows were filled with swooning girls. Um, <laughs> and I wanted to ask why, obviously quite good looking young lads, but apart from that, um, why do you think your music, having such a kind of old school um, rockabilly, even Motown kind of feel to your stuff, has such a broad appeal, particularly to younger audiences? I think because it makes it more accessible music. for them, okay. kind of thing. Mm. Like it's, they, it's new, but maybe they don't realise that, you know. I think they've discovered something. Yeah, it's just we're just rehashing old stuff, really. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I think I think it's it's taking yeah it's, it's old stuff, but it's kind of we're doing vibe. it in a yeah younger yeah. vibe kind of yeah. way. It's more hip hop, especially the live, because there's you know a lot of. The drums are more of a feature yeah. live kind of thing yeah. than you listen to on the album kind of thing. Mm. And um, well, I, I think, know, yeah, I think everyone sort of has like a liking to you know older, older sort of music. Like everyone sort of has like you know a song that they really liked from when they were you know little, especially old and stuff. So 
Pretty it's, nice. it's something that everyone can sort of relate to, but mm. um, so I think that's what we got going for us. We don't, you know, just appeal to a small um, age group or yeah. So mm. we're we're really lucky that we you know write music that is appealing to everybody. So I think the lyrics help as well. I think it really speaks to gets the um gets the young girl's blood flowing. We, we talked a lot about this <laughs> answering this question, and it's a load of bullshit. Basically, laid down. A lot of girls like laid down. They came to the show and love hearing Lay Down, I think that's really what got them. Like the first the first few shows were all about Lay Down. And well, now people are starting to like their other songs. Are you, yeah, resenting, are you resenting Lay It Down? <clears throat> no, I love Lay It Down for that. Absolutely Just love they it. liked it for the wrong reasons, didn't they? People actually tell, tell them, them the truth about the lyrics. Yeah, exactly. Oh, people, yeah, tell us the truth about it. Yeah, well, the, we had people write on our Facebook and Twitter and stuff saying, I walked down the aisle to this song, this is my wedding song. <laughs> so it's, it's not good. It's like, you obviously <laughs> haven't listened listen to the lyrics, your wedding, like your marriage is doomed because it's about um, break up, a fucked up relationship, really. Um, basically, it's like it's about like trying to work out like what the hell's wrong with your life, and then finding out that it's you and it's, it's the girl in your life. Yeah, that's awesome. And I don't know how it's got. I think it's because it's, it's got that beautiful melody and it's got the organ and everything. It just sounds sexy. People just immediately think, oh, this is a beautiful love song. But mm. and, I, and it's funny how people just completely the lyrics can go over someone's head. It's very deceiving song. Yeah. Well, it's awesome. Everyone can take their own interpretation from it. So yes. good for you guys and good for them. You're here with the Rubens and you're watching Beat TV.